how you're looking for the last one, I guess. Um, Mr. Camus, back in uh, 2010, or I guess it may have been uh, 2013, it, it, information came out that indicated that Ms. Lerner had contacted the Department of Justice re, uh, regarding the possibility of pursuing uh, uh, criminal investigation of election crimes targeting 501c4 organizations. Uh, uh, do you know if any of the tapes uh, uh, contain the emails uh, that would that would cover that? I, I don't know that at this time, sir. If that were in there, and I know this is a supposition, uh, a hypothetical, but if it were in there, would that indicate an animus toward those groups, it, it, particularly in regard to to what we believe was going on, uh, denying uh, certain 501c4 organizations uh, tax uh, the 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 tax status that they were seeking. There, there could act, there could be emails that we uncover that do indicate that type of behavior, but until we f we get to the point where we find unique emails, it's it's hard to speculate. Um, I, I believe I should direct this to Mr. George. If not, Mr. Camus, you can answer it. But the timeline that's been referenced repeatedly tonight, and and that was based that was based on the initial evidence that that you got the initial emails. Would it be possible that the timeline could change based on new evidence? Yes. Okay. Uh, we had um, several uh, members of the inspector general, several inspector generals in uh, before this committee a few weeks ago, and uh, talk. Uh, the the hearing uh, revolved around the fact that that uh, this administration had not always been forthcoming. Various agencies not always been forthcoming with documents. Uh, is there any indication that uh, evidence uh, or documents may have been withheld uh, in, in your investigation? Have, have you had that problem? As, as we're not complete with our investigation yet, I can't draw a conclusion that anything has been withheld from us. Uh, I, I just want oh, go ahead, Mr. Yes, sir, I was just going to add, too. That is the unique role that we have, we as IGs have with the agencies that we oversee, because if you don't ask the right questions um, and you, you have some authority to subpoena certain things, but you can't force someone to speak to you as of now. So it's, it would be easy for an agency to fail to provide information if you don't pose the right question. Now, there is a proposal out there, I understand, that would change that and would give uh, IGs additional authority. But, uh, but as uh, Tim indicated, he could not give you a definitive answer at this stage. Well, uh, I have to wonder, uh, obviously, the, um, the big issue is, is the um, supposedly erased emails or lost emails that why the IRS didn't inform Congress Center that uh, that uh, they may have had the tapes that uh, that had the information on it, and 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 whether or not they were forthcoming to the Inspector General's office, because I would assume that uh, you were asking those questions. That is correct, and we will we will include that in our investigation. My last question is: You mentioned seven individuals that uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it was you that that mentioned it or, or Mr. Meadows or, or Mr. DeSantis, but. Um, and it's getting late, but uh, that there were seven other individuals who um, may have missing emails as well that were in that uh, communication circle. Uh, my question is, have you uh, have you talked with them? Uh, we've we've included them in our investigation. Have they secured counsel? Um, I do not know that, sir. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.